And I just want to thank you very much for the kind invitation to speak here today. Uh, this was really lovely to be able to come to this follow-up event of the city's IPCC. And um, I'm going to speak a little bit about the um, lead-up and motivation for holding this conference, as well as the conference itself and um, the great amount of participation we had from all around the world, as well as some of the key specific outcomes from the research and action agenda, which we're developing um, as the outcome of this conference. there okay and so just first we want to start with why why we really want to focus on cities in the context of climate change and one of the key reasons is that in the last few decades there's been significant increase in urbanization growth in the urban population so in 2015 we went over 50 percent of um, the world's population living in cities and this urbanization is expected to continue at um, a quick rate and by 2050 um, it's expected that more than 66% of the population, so two-thirds, will live in urban areas. And as you can see from the second graph, um, there's already significant, significant percents, close to 80% um, of the population who live in urban areas in North and South America as well as Europe. But these, um, in Asia and Africa, we sit closer or below 50%. And so a significant, significant amounts of this um, urbanization between now and 2050 are really expected to occur in, um, in those uh, regions. And so again, why cities? So cities are really great, um, have really great possibility for solving climate change, as, but they're also really vulnerable to its ill effects. So um, though we only currently have about 50% of the global population living in cities, at this time, they, cities do result in about 70% of greenhouse gas emissions. So there's significant potential for mitigation of um, climate change and greenhouse gas emissions in cities if we can figure out ways to um, live, uh, yeah, reduce emissions in these contexts. Um, however, also uh, in the context of adaptation, as Roberto was just touching on, uh, cities also ho are home to significantly vulnerable populations partly due to um, migration, but also due to the context of where cities are situated. It's often um, increased risks of flooding, especially in vo for vulnerable populations, for example. And so just to give a bit of a history of how we came to this conference, um, and during the fifth assessment cycle, there was a greater focus on cities um, in the IPCC reports. However, those working on urban research and then also in the, the practice and policy realms um, in cities really said, yes, we're, we're starting to see this focus, it's growing, but it, it's really not enough. And so this, um, there needs to be further progress um, to include more research um, on cities in, the, in these assessment cycles. So during the um, early in the sixth assessment cycle, in early 2016, there was a um, discussion of the proposal of a special report on cities to be included as part of the IPCC assessment. However, this was pushed to the AR7 cycle, not the current cycle, as there was, it was thought, um, yeah, that um, there was not enough peer-reviewed literature available on cities um, to include this in, as part of the AR7, AR6 cycle. And so later that same year, at the next plenary of the IPCC, there was a proposal um, for the Cities IPCC conference, Cities and Climate Change Science, was approved. Um, and this conference, the outcomes of this conference will build um, to contribute to the AR6 as well as AR7 cycles, specifically the special report on cities and climate change during the AR7 cycle. And just to go over some of the main goals of the conference, this was really to inspire the next uh, frontier focus of research focused on cities and climate change in the next 10 years. So this is to increase the peer reviewed literature and knowledge um, to input into this into this um, special report. And so this, we really want to assess the state of academic and practice-based knowledge. So this is both peer-reviewed literature as well as gray literature, indigenous and local knowledge, which is 
um, available on cities related to climate change, and then after taking a stock of the, what is available to really um, establish a research agenda based on jointly identified gaps by the academic practitioner and policy, uh, urban policy communities, and so um, on research which is needed and information which is needed on cities related to climate change. And so, again, these specific goals are to stimulate research underpinning effective and efficient urban responses to climate change, and then to provide inputs via the peer-reviewed literature to the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change for its assessments. And there were two main committees that brought this um, conference together. First, the organizing committee, uh, which had glo nine global partners, which you can see um, on the screen. The um, city's IPCC partnership was made up of UN organizations, research networks, as well as city networks. And we were joined in early 2017 by our host city, the city of Edmonton in Canada, which played a really great host and were really, um, uh, really great advocates for cities and climate change and are, are continuing to move this agenda forward. And then, as we have significant participation here today um, from our other committee, the Scientific Steering Committee, which I was really privileged to work closely with in pre preparation for this conference. And one of the really key things to highlight about the Scientific Steering Committee was the real breadth of um, knowledge and expertise which they represented. So we had climate scientists, engineers, uh, specialists in atmospheric chemistry, as well as people working in municipal governments, both in the developing and developed world, and um, as well as representatives from key city networks around the world. And um, I just wanted to go over a little bit on the specifics of the conference. In the lead up, we were very excited to receive more than a thousand submissions of sessions and proposals to speak at the conference. And this really gave some evidence that this, this information on cities and climate change is out there, even though it may not be, um, have been shared across all contexts and all stakeholders or represented in the peer reviewed literature. Um, and one of the really exciting things about this large amount of submissions was there was a really significant focus in our call for proposals to have um, submissions that were, that were built on collaborations between the academic the practitioner and policy making communities working in the urban areas. So at the conference we had more than 700 participants which repre represented academia and research, policy makers from different um, levels of government, urban practitioners as well as representatives from the private sector, and indigenous leaders from Canada as well as global youth. And so this was really exciting. We were able to, we had 64 um, countries represented and we had a goal of meeting of, to achieve one third representation of conference participants from the Global South and we came very close to um, achieving this. And we also had a great gender balance at the conference which was um, fun to highlight as uh, International Women's Day <coughs> fell during the three days of the conference. And so some key outcomes are, as I mentioned, this global research agenda on cities and climate change, that is to advance the climate change science and gives recognition and visibility to knowledge generated by all urban stakeholders, not those which are currently represented, and not just those which are currently represented in peer-reviewed literature. It really enhanced the understanding of the impacts of climate change at the urban level and the range of possible responses and the role of cities in implementing the Paris Agreement and allowing us to keep warming below two degrees. And this then better informed the climate decision making at the local level and results in improved uh, relationship between the policy practice and scientific communities working in urban spaces on projects, on new platforms, and on partnerships. And one last thing that I wanted to highlight was um, there was a um, joint partner statement which was signed during the last day of the conference the science we need for the cities we want, and this is um, the organizations that represented the organizing committee coming together to really um, show their support for carrying out the actions that will be presented as part of the research agenda, um, and to get this research moved forward and into the hands of, of cities and their collaborators. So, um, and this statement is now open to, for, to be signed by other organizations, so if any organizations represented here today are interested, um, let us know, and this information is also available on the city's IPCC website. And then just to get into some specifics on the research and action agenda. So this research agenda was really co-produced by all attendees of the conference. We took um, recommendations as well as research gaps from the seven plenary sessions, the more than 50 parallel sessions which were held, 
as well as the 70 uh, poster presentations and from the five papers that were commissioned in the lead up to the conference to frame discussions, as well as important conference discussions which were um, had over coffee or um, during the sessions. And this information will all be drawn together by the city's IPCC scientific steering committee, as well as its support team. And this is being led by Future Earth, so I've been um, working very closely uh, with the scientific steering committee on developing this agenda. Um, and then this will be presented as the, part of the official report on the conference, the IPCC at the 48th plenary at the end of this year. And now I just wanted to go over the key topics which will be presented as part of the research agenda. So this was split, we've split this into um, three, three uh, sections, some cross-cutting gaps which were really present, present through many, many of the conference sessions and are really um, key things for, to focus on um, going forward. So both the challenges of urbanization, um, urbanization happening in many different contexts around the world, both in developing def in developed countries as well as across different world regions, and then also the challenges represented um, by looking at different scales. Um, so there's um, different impacts and effects at the national versus state or provincial scale, and then down to the, re to the um, local scale, and there's significant challenges in kind of bringing these together. Um, there was a much discussion about the lack of data modeling and scenarios at the city scale, as well as the importance of the systems approach when addressing um, cities in context of mitigating and adapta adaptation for climate change. Um, next we have a call to research and action on seven key items. So informality came out really strongly, the effects on informal settlements and economies on climate change, and how um, as, as these areas develop, um, we can continue to um, make sure that they have sort of just futures um, in context of development as well as climate change. Needs for um, new forms of governments and governance in urban contexts, um, as well, and then also as really focused on by Diana earlier this morning, urban planning and design as well as natural and built infrastructure. There will be both um, significant effects and impacts as we uh, move forward in retrofitting and building new infrastructure, and this can both affect uh, mitigation as well as adaptation. Uh, there's significant amount of consumption and production which occur, which both occur in cities, and um, figuring out ways to uh, have this, um, to work, on, work with this and uh, moving forward, and really account correctly for the consumption and production which does occur in cities and as due to city citizens. Then um, we focus on different financial <coughs> mechanisms which can be brought into um, addressing climate change in the urban context, as well as um, a focus on uncertainty as it applies at the urban scale. So there's many um, different factors that fit into global models and scenarios, but as we go even smaller, into smaller scales, these factors can be exacerbated and it's often hard to um, make accurate predi futures, future predictions. Um, and the last section is just on approaches for urban practitioners and policymaking community, urban practitioners and the policymaking community working with academia to support the research and action agenda. So the key things here were are the co-design and co-production of the knowledge and actions towards implementation, which are proposed, um, doing this in ways that empower cities to um, to act, as well as just fostering this long-term collaboration and how this can be done across cycles um, within these areas. And so I was just going to focus on three of the key points um, at the beginning, which are found at the beginning of this agenda, two of these cross-cutting gaps, as well as one of the um, one of the calls for research and action. So just in terms of uh, starting with the challenge of scale, uh, there was two different contexts in which we were looking at um, and were emphasized in terms of scale, both the spatial scale and different time scales that things which things occur. Um, and so things that are comparable across scales at the national level are often not very relevant to the local level. So, um, for example, NDCs, which are um, put out for, for countries as a whole, may not have as big impacts and um, positive impacts at the local level. And so making sure that these, um, these things are addressed. As well, the capacity for adaptation and mitigation in planning and action for, um, for addressing climate change are um, often very different when you go from the level of a national government to even to a megacity within the same country or to a small or medium-sized city 
uh, let alone the differences between, um, between different countries, between different development levels and cities. Um, also an interesting thing that, we, um, that emerged was the different time scales on which um, some of these different factors, which are uh, really important, um, propagate on. So the changing climate has, has its own time scales. But then there's the, also the time scales in which research can be funded, performed, and published, and then time scales uh, that are needed for decision making, um, as well as financing of all of these, and then implementation and action. And so weaving together uh, the different time scales for effective um, effective solutions is one of the uh, will one, be one of the challenges moving forward. Um, the next is uh, again I was mentioning that there's a significant there was a significant focus on data at the urban scale. And there's a couple different contexts in which um, urban data were discussed. There's one in which there's a wealth of data, and one in which there's, in certain contexts, um, in certain cities, in which there isn't really much data available at all. And however, when there is a wealth of data, it's sometimes unclear how it can be used or combined, or how it can this data can complement each other, even who holds the data, where it is, um, and, and how it can be an best analyzed. So, um, and then in other contexts, um, such as in informal settlements, there's virtually no data available on these um, settlements. And so um, the knowledge needed to, um, to address climate change is, is fairly limited. And so looking at different climate-related metrics, as well as socioeconomic metrics, city-relevant data, which re more relevant to policymaking and practitioners, needs, as well as evidence of climate action and impacts how climate actions that have been taken um, have actually impacted the citizens, whether there are trade-offs or co-benefits that were unexpected or additional to what was expected. And one of the main recommendations on um, data at the urban scale was to develop an international city scale observation framework with data on key metrics for implementation, evaluation, and adjustment of mitigation and adaptation strategies, and that this data be available open access to cities around the world. And the last point I wanted to focus on, um, there was a significant um, focus on informality at the conference with, with um, six sessions on informality, it being mentioned in almost all of the plenaries, as well as in various posters. Um, in, in informal settlements and economies, it was really highlighted that there's an increased, increased amount of vulnerability, as well as the lack of data, which I mentioned previously. But a couple of really important things which were highlighted in um, addressing climate change um, in informal in the context of informal settlements, which were, were the community involvement of um, residents in informal settlements, who often have significant amount of knowledge on their community, um, and also knowledge on the needs of the community, which can um, help influence which data is collected and how it's used. There's also um, significant low carbon opportunities and development patterns which um, occur in informal settlements, and if these can be um, sort of, um, moved into a more of a formal system. This can really move things forward. One example that was given um, was recycling that happens in informal settlements. Um, so separation of plastics and glass, and it being, which is being sold to market in um, cities where there is no recycling in the formal economy. So if this, um, this low carbon practice of recycling, which is already occurring, um, can be done in ways which are um, more secure for the informal collectors in terms of job security and safety of um, their practice. Uh, this can really um, accelerate um, some of these changes. So, um, and just that is all. So, in closing, thank you very much for your time, and please feel free to stay up to date on the other developments coming out of the conference. There'll be the research agenda, which will be um, presented to the IPCC in October, but there's also several other related events in addition to this great um, <coughs> follow-up conference that is being hosted here by UNAM. And big thanks to Gian Carlos for putting this together. And uh, again, you can feel free to follow, follow up on our website, citiesipcc.org, or on the Twitter feed. Um, yes, and that, that's pretty much all for today. <laughs>